We're almost like these these joy-seeking missiles. And we're always looking for joy. And so some people will go on and they'll try to find joy in maybe their career or success, accomplishments, achievements. Thinking, even though they may not say it, thinking, if I just reach this level, I'll experience this inner delight that I'm so longing for. Some people will try to find it in relationships. If I just have this, or if my marriage just looks this way, or if my parenting just looks this way, or my kids end up this way, then I'll finally experience inner delight that can transcend circumstance. We are joy-seeking beings. And the reason why we live the lives that we live, do the things that we do, say the things that we say, is we perceive that to be the pathway of joy. And so we need to hear the angel's declaration and announcement again, that there's good news of great joy and it's not found in your career. It's not found in your relationships. It's not found in your achievements. It's not found in your wealth. It's found in Christ and Christ alone. So I wanna help you understand this. How how do we experience this joy? If you and I are joy-seeking beings, how do we experience this? Well, first, as it's so evident and clear, we, we trust him, right? Like we trust the news that has been given to us. We need someone that can handle the brokenness of this world. We need someone who is a above the, the, the hardship, the struggles, the suffering. We need somebody that can handle that. We need someone who doesn't move or change, doesn't matter what happens in our life. We need somebody that can handle the change of circumstance. And of course, we know that is Christ and Christ alone. Now, let me say this. First, we trust him with our salvation. Like we trust him that we are sinners in need of a savior. That the great news is that those who are enemies of God can become friends of God by Christ and Christ alone. So we celebrate that. We rejoice in that. We trust him with our life, but we continue to trust him with all of life. I love what Jeff Vanderstelt, he's a pastor. He wrote a book called gospel fluency. He says, we're all unbelievers. Even the believer is an unbeliever in some area of his life. There's some area of his life or her life that they're not fully and completely trusting in God. So for you, what area of your life are you just not trusting Jesus? You think that joy, I mean, you may not say it, but you think joy is found in something else. It's not found in Christ in this part of my life. And it's in those parts of our life that Jesus pulls us in further and further and goes, I can be trusted. I can be trusted with your deepest hopes, your deepest longings, your dreams. I can be I can be entrusted with all of those things because I love you and I am above all things. And I won't move and I won't change. So the first thing I would encourage you to do is trust him. If you don't know him, trust him as your savior today. If you do know him, trust him with an arena of your life that you currently just don't trust him in. And then second, we continue to abide in him. You know, walking with Jesus is continual. It's not like, okay, when I was six years old, I trusted him as savior and that, that gave me the joy that I needed for sure. It gave me a joy, but it's not a complete joy. I want you to hear some of Jesus' final words with his disciples. John 15, he says this, abide in me and I in you. Literally means to remain in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Listen to what he says in verse 11. I have told you this so that my joy, remember he's the source, my joy may be in you and that your joy may be what? 
complete, full, mature, not lacking anything. So we begin this journey with Jesus. We trust him as savior. And then the rest of our lives, we learn how to trust him more and more and more and more. And that's called abiding.